Hello and welcome to the Studio Buddies podcast. My name's Simon and this is going to be a special upload of this. It's going to be the last episode that I upload of the Studio Buddies series and ironically it was the first. Now it's not episode one, it was actually the pilot that was recorded before that. Now for this episode the recording is a little bit rougher. It's not too bad, it's listenable, it's watchable. I've put in bits of clips of what we're talking about so I hope you still enjoy it. And um, I hope you've enjoyed the series as well. I will be doing another podcast after this called the Good Values Podcast, whereas Jamie's going to be doing her master's degree, I believe, and she's going on and still doing painting. So you can find her at Art by Jamie Thomas on Instagram. And for myself, I'm going to be continuing on doing the um, Good Values Podcast, where I'll be having guests and discussing the values of drawings as well as the values of how you conduct yourself. So... Let's get started with this episode. Let's take a look. Studio Buddies, doing a podcast with a little gay guitar. Hello, welcome to Studio Buddies podcast. My name is Simon. And I'm Jamie. And we are both fine art students who were in the same studio and we became buddies. The best episode, of buddies. The best of best buddies of studio buddies. Um, yeah. And it's this episode is a pilot episode. Where we're testing out, doing a podcast, and uh, talking about uh, Loving Vincent. The 2017, I believe, movie. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Now, this is a recommendation you made. And Indeed. And I hadn't seen it. I think I skipped out on it because I'd heard mixed reviews, which is something you shouldn't do, really, is it? Um, no. Um, I I had started watching it. I'd heard about it a few years ago. Um, and I was doing my dissertation proposal, you know, all of that crap. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and one of my influences is Vincent van Gogh. Um, and... While I was doing my dissertation proposal, I was like, I've put it off for so long, why don't I just watch it? Like, yeah. I could literally just watch it. So I did, and it was amazing. Uh, so if you don't like spoilers, why are you here? <laughs> it's, yeah, it not, it's not going to be spoiler-free. No. It's going to be uh, going into spoilers. But first of all, because we haven't discussed this at all, and that's kind of the point, is that I avoided talking to Jamie about this because I know that she loves this film yeah. and I haven't told her what I thought of it at all which is kind of exciting because I know that I'm not going to disappoint her but I'm hoping that we're going to have a, a discussion about different aspects of it and I've not even looked at the notes that I've taken but I did take loose notes while watching the film which I've never done before and it was interesting to take notes so basically you asked me actually um, how you take notes watching a film yeah. And what I did, because I don't know how you're supposed to do this, but I, um, whenever I'd have a thought about the film, like whenever I'd, you know, have an idea about something or I noticed anything, yeah. I'd either pause it or I'd just write down a name of something. Um, okay. So one of, the, one of the points is River. So I don't know what that's to do with until I look at the notes properly, but that's what I mean is I'll just write something down. And then yeah. I'm hoping that some part of these... I might look at these notes and have no idea what they mean, you know, because I've not looked at them. I've just made them and then said, I've taken notes. And then I might look at them and go, oh, actually, yeah, I don't know what this means. Yeah, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't tell me, like, what... Not even, like, a theme of what the notes were about, because you were like, no, it's too slippery, like, we'll end up talking about it, and that's, you know, we need to save it. So I've been really excited about this since, like, when was I told you about it? It's Last fun. week? No, Monday. Yeah, it, it was very recent, because I know that I managed to get a copy of it and uh, and watch it, because yeah. you were like, you've got to watch it tonight, and then I downloaded it whilst we were talking, <laughs> and... Uh, yeah, really, uh, so I'm keen, so let's get started, because that's kind of, you know, enough preamble, I think, to kind of explain the context of yeah. this podcast. Um, do you mind if I start by asking you your thoughts on it as well, first? Okay, go for it. So, yeah, um, okay, tell me about, if you want, say if people haven't seen Vincent, and they know that, they're loving Vincent, sorry, and it is 2017 film, um, 
it's uh, if they haven't seen it, can you give them any kind of overview of what they're what they're missing? Um. Well, for anyone that hasn't seen it, it's like a general overview. It's it's pretty much about um, after he died, there was a letter that hadn't been delivered to his older brother Theo, and this um, this guy he was sent to is it over. I should have. That's one of the things I didn't do is the notes of the characters' names, which I wish yeah. I did. Yeah. Well, they went to. He went to Orva because his dad was the postman, and he was like, "I need you to do this and deliver it by hand." Um, but they get there, and well, he gets there, and um, yeah, Theo had also passed away, and then it kind of it kind of delves into um, how Vincent had actually passed away. Um, and kind of, you know, the theories and the stories about it, and you get to... I, I'm i pretty sure people reacted the way they did. I think that was authentic. Um, you know, um, they saw him as just, like, a madman that caused trouble and stuff like that, when there was just so much more going on with him that was overlooked because of when it was. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, I mean, did you know much about Vincent and his life before watching this film? Um, yeah, because I had done quite a bit of research like before, um, so I knew that he he was quite late in his painting journey, I guess, if you want to call it that. So he didn't start off doing it as a teen. Um, it was more of like, you know, it, it says in the film he was 28, and I think that was probably right. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I knew that it was it was quite like, it was quite later on in his life, but not so that he was old um and that he did really struggle with his mental health and stuff like that um i knew that he'd cut off his ear um in a period of psychosis like i was i already knew about that um but yeah the the other thing which we will discuss later i think yeah that i didn't know and if you continue watching you'll you'll soon know because like if you look at wikipedia it doesn't mention it it doesn't say how he actually died it's just you know it's it's completely overlooked yeah yeah is this the are you referring here to the theory that we hear that seems quite compelling as far yes. as physics yeah because i was thinking that is that that does actually have a huge impact even though yeah as the story unfolds it casts doubts on that. Yeah, it's it's an interesting d detail, isn't it? Where you just think it's it might not be quite as cut and dry as they're trying to wrap yeah. it up. Yeah, um, and I, I knew I knew about like you know his stay in um, psychiatric units and asylums and stuff, um, and that you know uh, one of his most famous paintings, if you will, Starry Night, that was painted um, in an asylum. Um, but I didn't know anything about his brother Theo, I will admit. Um, so that was also a bit of a shock for me. The fact yeah. That, yeah. Yeah, go, go on. Sorry, go ahead. Fact yeah, because like I... He had died shortly after Vincent had passed away and I didn't know that. Um, so I, you know, I, I didn't really see it as a, a big thing, I guess, because it wasn't really talked about. Um, but I think that is that in itself is also quite devastating, really. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not really well known how, um, yeah, just aligned with his brother or just with his brother. Yeah. Um, you know, he was because it does seem that he was very lonely. Vincent was so. Um, yeah, that's a curious aspect where I'm still, I still don't really know enough, and I've just watched another. Uh, uh, one of those documentaries I mentioned to you uh, by Simon Sharma, uh, yeah. The Power of Art. I've just watched the Vincent van Gogh uh, episode of that, and I'm still familiarising myself with his story because I don't know really art history very well. Yeah. <coughs> so I um, I watched the film not knowing that much about him, only knowing his painting style. Yeah. Uh, and that's the painting style that he's famous for as opposed to the stages that he went through and the actual uh, I don't know what the paintings kind of tell you which I didn't really see by looking at them 
because until yeah. you know his story, I suppose it's it, it just makes the paintings have that much more you know gravitas as the uh, as the actual voice and mentality and emotion in his paintings, which which you just don't have yeah. otherwise to kind of get to know him. Uh, yeah. That's a really good way to get to know what he was going through and how talented he was. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that was interesting. I mean, let me go to my notes. This is going to be hilarious. Let me see. Okay, so <laughs> it says here, intro times two, which means that I watched the intro twice. And I think yeah. <coughs> the intro, I just mean that it's just credits and close-up of paint uh, yeah. moving, which was mesmerising to me immediately. Um, yeah. Now, what I've done is I've put, um, I've put green dots for uh, the things that I liked and red dots for the things that I didn't like on this okay. list. And it'd be cool if you could see, unfortunately you can't see this, so I'm showing it to the camera now, but uh, there are uh, one, two, three, four, five, eight green dots and only four red dots. So yeah. that's going to give you a little bit of an overview. Um, to answer your question about how what things I was making notes on. So the intro was, I just put intro times two because I wanted to mention that it starts so strong with the credits yeah. that I actually did get that excitement of, this is something I've missed out on. Yeah. Um, but I was immediately, straight after that green dot of intro, I've got red dot, rotoscope question mark, because I was a little bit taken out of it by how filmy it looked. You know, yeah. with the movements of people, I could very much see the actor clearer than I wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> That's maybe one of my nitpicks, but I think the more that I get into Vincent van Gogh, I may strengthen in that opinion. I can't imagine it weakening where I think, oh, no, it's actually better, because when I saw his paintings alongside the actors, I thought they've done a little bit too much rotoscoping, in my opinion, because the strongest yeah. part was the more painterly descriptions, you know? yeah. So, do you have, do you agree with that, or do you kind of think that the rotoscope was kind of non-invasive? Um, well, it, it was one of the things that I did notice um, because I notice um, I don't know her last name, uh, Sersha. Yeah, Sersha Rowan. Um, yeah. Yeah, I noticed her, and I was like, "Oh, it's Sersha," um, mm. which isn't really something that I wanted to experience. And I know that they tried to match the actor to like closely match it to the painting but I don't know I feel like they could have done more with it to mm. have it further resemble the the original painting that he'd done himself um yeah it, it was off-putting a little bit and you know the the actor for from Game of Thrones uh, I don't know who that'd be I'd be thinking because I don't know Game of Thrones outside of the uh Main. He's um, the guy that played the Doctor. I immediately recognised who oh, right. he was. He yeah. was very good. Let me think. I can't think of who that was now. But yeah, he was very good. Uh, so we go. So that's is that where you noticed him through the rotoscope? Uh, yeah. Yeah. And that that was a little bit of a weird experience because, like, in terms of everything else, I did really enjoy it because it was, you know, it's it's a very visual film. Um, and that's something that I need to be able to be engaged. But then that little blip where it's like, I know who these actors are, it did throw me off a bit. Yeah, I, I suppose a lot of my gripes with films is not trying to be too down on them, and I'm very critical of things where I lose the suspension of disbelief. Yeah. Um, because there's a lot of disbelief that happens with high-concept things, and, and a lot of films are pretty high-concept by their nature of you're watching an action film, you know, which means that this is telling you straight away you're watching an action film, whereas this film's like you're watching a, you know, a very, a, an amazing accomplishment for such a, uh, you know, never yeah. before done a feature length, you know, it's the first time, the world's first feature length animated film, it says. Uh, feature yeah. length, sorry, animated film in oil paint. Because uh, obviously there's feature length animated films. I've taken a note a bit sloppy there. So oil painted animated feature film. It's 94 paintings of Van Gogh that have been um, translated into 66,960 frames of oil paintings. 
Yeah. I watched I watched behind the scenes and took notes of behind the scenes as well. So I thought it's <laughs> if I've taken notes to criticize the film, I should do at least a little bit of credit to it. The way they filmed it was they did live action and then they did special effects and then they yeah. did computer generation, which will have been the um, you know married up with the rotoscoping of the live action, and then they did oil painting after that. And yeah. they had eight, eighty oil painters in total, um, which was uh, another thing which is. It feels terrible to have any notes on a film which has done so much with 80 oil painters. I thought they'd be, you know, a lot more than that. Really, because uh, yeah, it did seem to shift in quality as well at times where I thought that scene then was absolute magic and the scene before or after would have been slightly less so and I could feel it was either a different studio or a, a lot of effort into one part which maybe drained another part or just up against each other yeah seemed to just hit me differently the, the things which i'm definitely have critiqued and this is the next the next note that i've taken which is a red spot which is the black and white aspects of this yes film. they're very non-painterly yeah you know, they're very photorealistic they look kind of like a procreate portrait yeah where it's trying to look almost painterly but like a digital painterly and I'm not a fan of that, and I feel terrible saying it because the film is visually stunning, absolutely stunning. But the notes I've got is because if they hadn't done these aspects of heavy rotoscope work and the black and white scenes, which were even more apparent in their um, their removal from the artistic approach of, yeah. of presenting it, you know, and that's where I thought, oh, it's such a loss because I would have been the biggest promoter of this film if it I mean I've promote, I've already recommended it to my mum who paints so I'm not shy about uh, promoting this film yeah. to people who I think will get benefit from it uh, yeah but yeah you agree with that black and white note yeah? yeah it again it was one of the things that threw me off and I think like I understand why they did it but I think even if they'd done it still in the style of Van Gogh it would have mm. been better um yeah yeah it just it didn't sit right with me and um when i when i showed it to my partner and we were watching it he was a bit baffled by it as well um yeah. and you know he's not a painter um he's he's more into photography and stuff like that um mm -hmm. and he had a little bit of like you know it threw him back as well because it it didn't seem to fit like it didn't it didn't fit well with the overall like style of the film it yeah it was weird it was so alive when it was in color yeah that all of the background and everything slowly moved with brush strokes you know just progressing as the rest of the painting moved yeah that it was almost like a nightmare before christmas where all of it looked a little bit alive yeah and then when it went to the black and white all of those painterly marks were gone and then it was like i said it was like a you know like a high-end um procreate portraiture of celebrities in costumes yeah. doing scripts and it really took me out of it so much so that i i thought that is unfortunately a note that i have to make yeah um but yeah it's um i've next got a, a note about an incredibly powerful scene for me visually okay. which was at the river where I believe this is where he meets the boatman yeah. for the first time. And there's an animation of a net. And I, I, all I remember about it now is that I think it was a reddy brown. And the way that they'd rendered it was just amazing and perfect to me because it was very painterly. Yeah. And it was not, you know, it wasn't rendered in a way where you think we're going to rotoscope a net. You know, they kind of instead, they actually had a painterly approach to how to render a net into brush strokes. Yeah. Um, just one of those things that I thought I've got to make a note of this because this is such an amazing visual thing that you don't see in films or in any kind of animation unless it's you know an animated short which is showing off the ability and the vision of someone or, or a team yeah um, I just thought that was amazing I don't know if you remember that scene but <clears throat> all of the river scenes to me were very except for obviously when it delved into black and white there which it started to have to do because of the story but yeah um 
just visually the, the river was so rich and it's lovely because that was obviously places where he'd loved to uh, to visit yeah um i i did really enjoy the river scenes i don't remember the net though um that might have been a period where i just briefly looked away <laughs> <laughs> it may just be me as well that's the type of thing which could be a unique like something which you just notice about a painting where you're like oh look at that part yeah and to me that stuck out because it's uh it was interesting you don't you know it's, it's it wasn't a main i don't think it was focused upon it was just something which i've noticed and thought it, it deserves a note yeah um, i do actually I um that, sorry i do have one okay. scene that i got very confused by um What's that? you know where um He's talking to that guy on the ladder. Yeah. Was that supposed to be a roof? Yeah, I think that's thatched roofing, yeah. Because it I I it took me a while to kind of understand what was going on there. Oh really, was it? Yeah. yeah. I, I to be honest, I knew that that was a lovely old style of roofing where you'd have what looks like straw or hay or something just being sewn into this you know, thing on the roof. Yeah. But I, I don't know what they're doing. I've never done that roofing. I've done very small amount on roofs. And uh, I liked the scene as far as, because it was a change. Yeah. That's one of the things I could have made a note about is that there was a lot of returning to places where you felt like, I know that it was doing a murder mystery. Yeah. Um, it was one of the things where I think, the film's been, when I watched, after watching the film and watching behind the scenes and, getting my notes together I thought I'm going to now see what other people say yeah and see if I agree or disagree and my favorite movie reviewer actually I disagree with on this because he just said it was really boring <laughs> and, uh, and I know why he's saying that because it's if he's not already into the story and he doesn't know any more than his painting style his ear being cut and his mental health yeah he's not going to find the murder mystery as compelling and I I understand it because I think if they would have included some of his life... Oh, bless you. Thank you. Yeah, um, uh, after watching the, the uh, Power of Art by Simon Sharma's episode on Vincent van Gogh, there's enough in his life which that style of painting would have been far more captivated story-wise yeah. to get a larger audience. And it's more for lovers of Vincent van Gogh to have a real untold part of the story developed, which is... It's another thing which is just to me a bit sad about the the film's reception because it doesn't have a, I don't think it has great reviews on um, as far as its rating yeah you know in films and um, and I'm not I'm not sure about that actually I may be wrong there but I think I looked at the overall Metacritic and Rotten Tomatoes and it wasn't what it deserves but I think that's because it's it's followed a, a line of filmmaking where you are. It's almost it could have been a noir film. Yeah. You know, the way that you're watching it. And he, he doesn't really do noir art. So it was a stylistic challenge that way to kind of compel an audience yeah. to invest in, you know, the, the mythology of Vincent because of... Uh, sorry, it feels a bit casual saying Vincent. I <laughs> such a regard for him. I feel like I could say his name in full every time I say it. Um, hey... A little uh, fourth wall break for a second, if you don't mind. I don't know about you, but I've really struggled to look at the camera or the screen <laughs> while we've been recording. Have you been doing okay with have that? You, have you just moved your, um, your earphones because the mic is slightly muffled? Ooh, oh, there good... you go. Hey. <laughs> um, uh, I've been looking, I've been able to like look at the screen and every now and again I'm looking at the camera, but I'm, I keep on touching my hair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even looking at the camera because I've got the camera, the the setup side on, yeah, which I thought would be good, and I'm actually just looking straight ahead of me. So I should have put the camera straight ahead of me. Yeah. Next time I might set it up that way, but at the moment this setup is going to have to stay as it is. But I just thought I'd do a quick fourth wall break for, uh, for our own benefit to say I didn't really look at. I'm not going to look at the camera that much for the screen, so. I don't know how that's going to look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it goes. Anyway, uh, so sorry about that. I just thought I'd mention it. That's all right. The way of that. Um, so, yeah, that's one thing which I thought when I looked at the um, reviews, they did mention the problems with 
making a film that was going to captivate an audience that wasn't already, you know, interested in him yeah. as an artist. And I think that's why it may have struggled is because his life was so rich for subject matter and yet um, what we get is, a, a, you know, like a mystery yeah. that we've got to watch and it's hard to understand, but it's... And I didn't know enough about Vincent for it to have the gravity it really deserved Yeah. because I was more captivated by the uh, imagery than by the... Um, the significance of what was being said because I'm learning bits about him uh, as I'm going along. Yeah. It's all stuff which people probably already know. I mean, I'm not sure how much people know about Vincent van Gogh, but I didn't know much at all, you know, about him. Same with all artists. I'm very new to art history, really. What did you know about him before, then? I don't think I would have known that he was Dutch. Um, mm. I don't think I would have known where he was from. I think I would have said... Uh, Van Gogh, I think I, I would have maybe, I don't know, I may have hazarded a guess, I'm not sure, but before watch, I mean, I knew because of art school, basically, someone said, it probably was you or someone who did, you did a talk on Van Gogh, did you? Oh, no, you didn't, you did one on... No, I did one on Mestag. Someone did, or said something about Van Gogh where I thought, okay, I'll remember where he's from because I'm not good with things like that. Yeah. I mean, like, as I said, I, I wasn't, I didn't know that Rembrandt was a... Uh, Dutch painter until I watched uh, the Simon Sharma episode on yeah. on Rembrandt, you know, um, and just learning from bits of you know here and there bits of information. It's hard to get a decent picture, um, but yeah. So I, I only knew I only knew his painting style uh, that he'd cut off part of his ear to give to a woman who worked as a prostitute. Yeah. but I didn't know how much because I knew that it wasn't his ear I think I knew that it was a sliver of his lobe or something like that yeah as opposed to his whole ear uh, I didn't know that he'd um been shot when he died or shot himself um I don't think I knew anything about his death I think I only knew that um he had mental health issues and uh, um I don't know I think it was when I was in first year that my brother showed me a drawing and said you know what do you think of this yeah uh, he said, you know, it's incredible, and he told me it was Van Gogh, and I, you know, said, yeah, it makes sense because it's very much his style, and it was just so impressive. Yeah. Uh, so I knew that it was uh, that was verified to me because that's, I mean, it may be wrong, but to me that verifies that I'll be judgmental on whatever and just tell you honestly what I think, yeah. regardless of if he said, you know, if I would have said it's rubbish and him say it's Van Gogh, I'd say, well, I don't get it then because it's rubbish, but I didn't. I saw immediately that I was massively impressed by the mark making i don't think i'd understand people not seeing how impressive it is even if it's not their taste yeah it's so well done his drawing i personally prefer prefer his drawing i think not because i don't like his painting i love his painting but his drawing to me is so powerful because it's so much more limited to me what you can do with a pencil yeah than what you can do with paint i don't know if i'm wrong there but i feel like there's limits on drawing which there aren't on painting um i could be wrong um I think so. Yeah, yeah, to see, yeah, to see how he made marks was just, you know, masterful, absolutely masterful. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I didn't know much. I didn't know much at all, and I still don't know much really. Um, so all of it was a bit. I was a bit lost in the story. Yeah. Um, in some of the characters, it's. I love the guy who gave that theory on uh, how he died. You know, the, and I, I meant to write down his name. I think it's Dr. Mazary. I don't by, remember. By Bill Thomas. I, I'm, I've got a star there next to it saying Dr. Mazary dash Bill Thomas, yeah. which is probably the actor who played him. That was an amazing, well-played scene, which I thought, even if I, you know, was out of it for a second and going, this is a theatrical moment in the film, yeah. it was so well-acted that I was happy to just go along with it, and that's what I wanted from the rest of it, really. Yeah. It was just very well done. Some of the acting was a bit hit and miss. I think I've got a note here somewhere. Yeah, I have. It's further down. So I'll go through the I'll go through the rest of the notes first. So I have, I should say that it says river dash net and in brackets ref as in it's a good reference. Yeah. For how to paint a net. I think I was just massively impressed by how how they'd rendered a net in a very impressionistic or expressionistic, sorry, I should say. 
um, manner. Yeah. Um, the next one is um, church. So this is when he was stood outside of a church smoking a cigarette. Uh, this is the yellow jacket yeah. uh, chap. What was he called? I should have written this down. This is terrible. Anyway, that handsome young gentleman who was delivering the letter, um, he was uh, talking to the lady who disliked him, the one who, yeah. the one who has this. And she has this amazing hat. And that's the. this is the terrible thing is my notes are based on, I'm going to watch that scene several times because of, that's one thing where I was happy with rotoscoping because the hat was amazing as a shape. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if that makes any sense at all as a note, but... He wouldn't see anyone walking again. down the street with a hat like that nowadays. I mean, it's no, but I mean, even if you <laughs> did, I'd still have the love for it because I'm like, that as a shape, you could make that into a spaceship or into ghost or into a cartoon or into because yeah. it's such an interesting shape as far as it had this brim that kind of waved off and tapered to nothing yeah and held its shape when she turned her head the way the shape turned was almost like have you heard of mobius no i'll have to send you mobius's work i think Do you think that 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 still was you know it was quite important because even now it's it's the same within communities yeah. and I I think it's it's probably very true to how people viewed him and how they were as a community with um, Vincent at the time mm. so I think it was important to to have that aspect there yeah yeah, yeah it's it's sort of I'm not down on the film, I'm sort of, I'm down on the fact that it's never going to make that impact that it should have done because the story's about what happens afterwards trying to find, well it's not even what happened afterwards is it, it's kind of telling a story where they had to make up a lot of things because they only had these 94 paintings and therefore yeah. they had to create where things happen, like where could have this happened, you know, where possibly could this be set and they kind of pick a location which I don't mind any of that because that's lovely for storytelling um, I think it's just that it's sad and it's kind of slow throughout a lot of it until that end point where you get one point from Dr. Mazarin another point from yeah. uh, Dr. Gashi and um, they were quite close together where I was like these are the most impactful moments it's a yeah. shame to not have the power of Vincent's actual experience because the bits where you saw him going outside and painting in the rain were magical yeah. to me and I could have quite happily been outside with him you know and just yeah. that be a, a I don't know a five or ten minute scene of whatever that is you know like the inside of his kind of heart to the looking at his eyes to what happens on his you know canvas and yeah you've got to do a lot of imagining there but they're doing that for the whole film so you've got to kind of yeah have people who can just replicate this stuff or just trial and error, have this, you know, expressionistic mark making. And, um, and yeah, and to be able to sort of create this storytelling which we have of, of how he made his art. And it yeah. kind of skimmed over certain stuff. It's like the bullying of him was told as gossip and it's kind of how we know it. Yeah. As opposed to actually trying to get personality from him. He doesn't really get to say much. And I think he obviously did say a good amount with his writing. So he must have spoken yeah. to people, you know? They don't they don't really cover um any of his time in um in the mental institutions either. No. Which is something that I would have I would have wanted to, to watch as well. Absolutely. Because you know, the entire time he was probably sending letters to his brother Theo. Yeah. And they could have they could have added some of that in there so yeah. you know just to just to add that kind of reality to it again mm. to be like this is what he was living through this is you know his community had done this yeah. to him because they like we said before they passed him off as as a madman yeah. so you know they put him in that place and i would have wanted to know what he thought about being there, what he thought about, you know, people signing the petition, but there was none of that. No. 
No, it's uh. Sh- surely he would have, he would have sent a letter to Theo and been like, "This is what's happened." You know, they've they've all signed it, and now I'm here. Yeah. Like surely. Yeah. I mean, I I just realised it's kind of what they had for the film as far as the story and how they'd constructed it. <clears throat> In all honesty, it must have seemed like this will do it because it's it's a lot which they tried to get in there and I'm not trying yeah. to take away from that but so I do realise that they must have looked at it and thought this will be if anything more than enough because there's a lot of information that we're trying to fit into this film that is someone's life you know as part of someone's life and the description of them to a certain extent and then with this yeah. amazing visual aspect of an oil painted animated film that's feature length you know is just another level of impressive uh, way to deliver it so all of these yeah. notes is not to try and take away from that obviously like I keep saying but it's more they mustn't have seen that what they had was a lot but it was maybe too much early on of stuff which did pay off as well until yeah. the end and I appreciate that the end did pay off and you've got to do that in a film but I'm someone who loves slow films and um and I did feel that some of it, I thought, I need to watch this again at some point because I'm not concentrating well enough on some of this because yeah. it deserves more attention than I'm giving it. And uh, and it was difficult because the dialogue, I think, and the pacing of the story was a little slow in points. And it's, again, not to be you know mean to them, but just to sort of say that to hold the attention of audiences can sometimes require beats to be yeah. you know hit upon. Um, but I will get to the, the last note that I've got after that abstract close-ups of the truth with uh, Dr. Gachet. I can never remember the French name. Yeah. Gachet, yeah. yeah. Um, my last note is the, the end credits, which is not actually the end credits, but the kind of first thing that you see when the film ends is them going through a book. <clears throat> and it's digitally done, but it's beautifully done. Such, such a well-done yeah. end sequence where it's showing his paintings that they base the characters off of. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you remember that, but that's... Amazing. I mean, I could have that as a separated scene to just click on and watch once in a while. So yeah. to see his artwork, after all this amazing filmmaking, to see his artwork in a book next to the characters was really nice to see how well they've done that work, you know. Yeah. So that's, that's all my notes about the film, to be honest, outside of the details of that it was one female artist called Dorota uh, Kabila, who she was the one who... <clears throat> who kind of saw this aspect of the story and wanted to explore it and she wrote it and uh, directed it with Hugh Welchman and then it was produced by a couple of studios uh, Yeah. so yeah I just wrote down that as notes because I was quite impressed by her having this vision really and getting all these artists it's just an unbelievable accomplishment it was an international project as well yeah, yeah absolutely there was an artist from Cornwall um yeah. America, Poland, Russia, I think. So it was it was literally just like, you know, artists from everywhere. Yeah, I and watched... they all got Sorry, they all got trained um, to, you know, paint in his style, yeah. which is really impressive. Yeah. Yeah, there is one behind the scenes where it's in I don't know if it's Portugal or something, but um <clears throat> it was amazing to watch them paint. It was. It made me want to paint. You know, it's, uh, yeah. Just look at the behind the scenes. Was I don't know. Like I said, I always love uh, the idea of making an animated something, and um, and then seeing it being yeah. done with paint wasn't something that I see and think is daunting. I just think I'd, I'd love to try that. I would love to try it, but you'd have to know that you have that time, and you don't have to worry about yeah. getting paid by anyone because if you're not. If you haven't got a budget, then you can't afford to invest that time in the project. But my God, if anyone ever does something like that, I would apply for it. Yeah. I've got no portfolio to back it up and say, this is why I'd be suitable. <laughs> but at the same time, I'd, I'd very much dedicate all of my time to doing that. It's amazing. Yeah. So, yeah. Now, I, uh, I very much you know, love the uh, film all in all, though. Like I said, I've immediately passed it on to my mum, which... Is not very often, but I do think, and she's not even a Van Gogh fan, but I do think that she'll love that film, you know, just because it's, yeah. despite everything that I say about my nitpicks, it's a very good film, 
very good film and I don't yeah. think the reviews picked up on how good a film it actually is even with the problems that it's got in it. um, and it's it's just weird it's funny to hear when you know because I'm a fan of certain film reviewers um, it's funny to hear both uh, the guy who I usually watch and um, Mark Kermode you know in Simon Mayo yeah he had similar things where he just did not given it a very good review um, and quite a low rating online and everything and it's it's just I think it is just not knowing enough about the story before he died um, yeah and maybe because they always tell that in a live action way I've never seen oh excuse me that's my digestion um, I've never seen the live action films of Vincent van Gogh have you seen any of them? no there have been some which I have not seen. I think they're just called Vincent or something like that. Um, and there's probably more than one. But I haven't seen that. And that's why I think it doesn't appeal to me to watch a film with an actor playing Vincent van Gogh. Whereas the animated yeah. film did until it had got bad reviews. Which I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and ignore more now. <laughs> you know, because seeing yeah. those people say that made me go, oh, God, guys, you, you're far more... I mean, both of those people, and I know I've only named Mark Hermo, but I mean, I don't want to shit on the other guy because I love him so much. But I'm, I'm so strong in my opinions against stuff like that that, uh, yeah, I'm, a, I'm not the best person to take for a superhero film very often. Um, well, at least you didn't rip apart Loving Vincent. No, I just feel like I've obviously got notes on it, but not because I didn't yeah. like it, but because I did like it and I... I felt like it felt sure where it should have really resonated with everyone and even lost yeah. me at, at times where, you know, like I said, the road to scoping was just a nitpick, which I got over, but then it kept happening. You know, the, kept, the black and white just kept happening where I was like, ah, oh. and then the water happened where I was like, that's beautiful. I'm making a note of that. The water is unbelievably beautifully animated. Yeah. I don't know. Very, uh, very interesting film about, uh, you know, one of the most important artists ever, if not the most. Um, so that is our pilot episode of Studio Buddies. It is. <laughs> How do you feel wow. about the episode? <sighs> to be honest, I was in bricks. <laughs> and now I'm fine. Yay. Um, I quite enjoyed it. It was good. Yeah, me too. <sighs> yeah. I think I should do, like, whatever the next one is, though, I should let you do at least the equal amount of talking because you've got a lot a lot of interesting contributions to make and I'll, I will just non-stop yak, yak, yak if you let me. Yeah. How are we, how are we going to end this episode, do you think? Well, coincidentally, like you said that, I did happen to just get the old... is the last episode done and I really enjoyed recording it it was a great experience for me and I appreciate everyone who's watched and uh, commented and and liked the, um, the episode so far uh, there was quite a lot of stories behind them and maybe one day I'll discuss it but for now I'm going to leave it there and move on to new things so as for me and the little gay guitar I do appreciate you uh, sticking with us for this series 16 episodes after we've chopped the uh, second to last one in half. The last episode that we recorded was the Van Gogh Alive exhibition and it's quite fitting that the first one that we ever recorded was the pilot which was a discussion about the uh, Loving Vincent film that came out in 2017. So I think it bookends it quite well where we start and finish with Vincent Van Gogh theme and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, comment down below, subscribe to the channel and ring that notification bell. And I will see you in the new podcast, which is called the Good Values Podcast. 
and in any art videos which I'll be uploading on Monday, Wednesday and Friday. The Good Values podcast I'll be uploading on Fridays, so I'll see you there.